marriage, joy. Remember, joy or happiness is your essential nature. But it is very difficult to enjoy because you have to disappear. You exist as ego. And ego cannot enjoy or celebrate or remain blissful. Joy is possible only if you are not. You and joy cannot coexist. When joy is there, you are absent. When you are there, joy is absent. They are like light and darkness. Just as two cannot exist together in the same place, so too you as ego and happiness cannot exist together. Hence, to enjoy is difficult the most difficult thing in life. It is not easy because to die is difficult. To die is not easy. Only those who know how to die moment to moment know how to enjoy. In order to, to sublimate ego, you have to die to each moment. The moment it is finished, that particular event or circumstance or situation is finished, you have to die to it. It does not exist for you anymore. This is meant by dying moment to moment. The more capable you are of dying, the deeper will be the joy that you can experience. And it will be very intense. And the only way to do it is to die moment to moment. And then you can experience the flowering of it. You cannot enjoy or celebrate because of your ego sense that you are. Because of your ego sense, you cannot come out of the past that is no more, that keeps on lingering in the memory and you cannot first you have to learn to forgive that you have to, and in that that past disappears for you you have to learn the art of forgiveness forgiveness is the key to come out of the past to come out of the past you have to be forgiving to come out of the past to come out of the past, you have to be forgiven. If you have learned the art of forgiveness, you can come out of the past and at the same time, you can be free of ego. It is also difficult to enjoy because you have so many investments in your misery. Unless you see it, you can go on trying to enjoy but you will never enjoy. Those investments in misery have to be dropped and from their very childhood and from their very childhood everyone has learned that misery pays. If you are miserable, the parents are more loving. If you are ill, the parents are more caring. If you are happy, healthy, then nobody cares for you. You do not get attention. And attention is the food for ego that everyone aspires. Without the attention, the ego cannot live. Attention is the very breath. Just as body requires oxygen, ego requires attention. Whenever you are healthy and happy, the parents do not pay attention to you. There is no need. But when you are ill, miserable, crying, the whole family becomes attentive to your needs. As if you have created a kind of emergency. They drop all their work. The mother runs from the kitchen. The father drops his newspaper and everybody is focused on you, it gives your ego great fulfillment. 
Thus slowly and slowly you learn the way of ego and you remain miserable and you remain miserable and people will pay attention to you. You learn the great secret of remaining miserable because misery brings sympathies and whenever you are enjoying nobody sympathizes with you. That is why people pay so much of respect to the ascetics. Somebody is fasting and people say, look what a great saint. He is simply being miserable. If you are feasting, nobody is going to sympathize with you and it is considered that you are a worldly person. If you are fasting, people will sympathize with you. If you are in love with a woman who is going to sympathize with you, on the contrary, people will be jealous. You are a competitor. Maybe they wanted the same person themselves, but they could not get it, so they are your enemies. Renounce sex, become celibate, move to a cave or to the mountain, People will come from far away places to pay their respect and they will say here is a great ascetic. And you are simply being miserable, but misery pays. Misery makes you a great saint. That has been the whole history of humanity. Misery has always paid. You have respected miserable people. And if misery is self-inflicted, of course you gain more respect, but this is voluntary. With your focus on misery, ego cannot dissolve. There is no way you can celebrate your life in all its aspects. There is no way for your marriage will be a journey of celebration and transcendence. For marriage to be a journey of celebration and transcendence, first you have to dissolve your ego. It happens in your body. It happens in your body as well. If you have a headache, your attention moves to the head. You forget the whole body. If you have a pain in the leg, then the whole attention moves towards the leg. You forget the rest of the body. In that case, the leg becomes very important. It is good that leg and head and hands are not politicians. Otherwise, they would constantly be in pain and they would remain constantly in pain as well. It is good that they do not have any egos. If the leg had any kind of ego, then the leg would continuously create troubles because only when there is trouble the attention goes towards it. You massage the leg, you take care of it and so many things are done to it. This is the inner mechanism as well. Attention goes to the part which is in pain and it is the mechanism of the family, of the society, of the world at large and it pays an integral part of male-female relation. It pays. Once you have learned the trick, it becomes unconscious and autonomous. You simply go on using the trick. The husband comes home and the wife immediately starts being miserable. This I have watched. All this is the outcome of emotional immaturity, lack of understanding and the functioning of lower emotions. I have known many families where husbands and wife and children all have unpleasant things to say about each other. You cannot hear anything good about the husband's or wives. Both are full of complaints about the other. 
The wife is laughing and is happy with the friends or children or on the phone. And suddenly the husband comes and her face changes. Not that she is doing it, no. There is no need for anything to be done anymore. It is automatic. Seeing the husband coming and suddenly an automatic change takes place in her face and it becomes suddenly miserable because the husband will only pay attention to her if she is in misery, otherwise not. He will go to his office or do something else and she will not get the attention. The children always looking for attention, doing this and that and so, so they can get the attention. If they are sitting in a corner doing their work, they will not get the attention. You have to be conscious of this mechanism. And the moment you are aware, your process of automation loses its significance. Therefore, it has to be made a conscious effort. Watch out for it. Otherwise, it will destroy all possibilities of joy in life. It has already destroyed millions of people live in misery and hell because they hanker for attention. It is a stupid to hanker for attention. It does not give you anything. Instead, it only strengthens the ego which is not you. It is not your essence. It is only the personality, your pseudo-self. It goes on nourishing the pseudo-self and the essential self go, goes on starving. Ego is the false identity that, that you have created. The essential self does not require any attention. This is the outcome of meditation. When meditation attains fruition, you experience your essential being. You know that you are light. You are embodiment of light, indestructible. It is the experience of the cosmic oneness. The essential self can live without any attention because it is not dependent on anyone else for its fulfillment, enjoyment or anything else. And the essential self is capable of rejoicing in its aloneness. It does not even need the other. So what to say about attention? It does not even need the other. It's Real is bliss is inwards. It does not come from outside. It does not depend on any condition. It is unconditional. It does not depend on the other. It does not make any condition only if this will happen then you will be happy. It is a spontaneous inner and intrinsic phenomenon. When this happens, your lower emotions are satisfied, are sanctified. It is only when lower emotions are sanctified that the journey of the higher realms become possible. Otherwise, there is every possibility for you to falter and fall back in the dark caves. Watch and see how you are profiting from misery and then you will know why it is so difficult to enjoy. Remember unless you learn to enjoy and appreciate there is no fulfillment in life possible. It does not matter what you enjoy or appreciate. Appreciation and enjoyment has to be your intrinsic quality. Uh, oh, your essential nature, then you will be appreciative of everything, small or big, 
significant or ill significant stop these investments in misery and the life will begin to flow in a different direction to be joyous is the secret that cannot be told however in the company of the one who has known this can be caught this is your inner flowering and when this happens your life and all relation attain to maturity these will take to the inner realm of bliss and harmony and then one day transcendence happens we are born with joy joy is your very being it does not need anything to be joyous one can simply be joyous sitting by oneself joy is natural misery is unnatural but misery pays it is profitable joy is purposeless it will not bring you any profit so you have to choose between joy and misery if you want to be joyous you have to be nobody this is the decision you want to be joyous you will have to be nobody because you will not get any attention on the contrary people will feel jealous people will be antagonistic to you and people will not like you people will like you only if you are in misery certainly then they will sympathize with you in sympathy your ego is fulfilled and not only yours but their ego is also fulfilled whenever they sympathize with somebody they are higher and you are lower they have the upper hand they are enjoying the trip of sympathy this is why people like to sympathize with others to satisfy their ego and superiority when you are sick in the hospital the people keep on throwing you keep on coming and when they come to you they start instead of sympathizing with you they start narrating their own problems their own sicknesses sympathy is violent they are they are seeing the fact that you are miserable and they are not they are in a position to sympathize and you are in a position to be sympathized to with their ego is fulfilled and your ego is also fulfilled because look you say to yourself how important you are everybody is sympathizing with you coming to visit you so the two egos are fulfilled it is profitable nobody loses when you are joyous rejoicing who comes you? you are dancing singing just being happy for no reason at all your ego will disappear because it will not get any attention and others will not feel good because you are not giving them any opportunity to fulfill their egos that is the reason why people were against jesus and against buddhas and why they were against all buddhas just see jesus with his friends eating drinking they were just celebrating and enjoying people could not tolerate it they would have loved him if he had been an ascetic but he was not One day he came to the town and Mary Madeline came to see this man for the first time and she fell in love with him the man was worth loving how can you avoid it how can you manage not to fall in love with such a man she brought a very precious perfume and poured it on Jesus feet and washed the feet with that precious perfume and she was crying with joy and judas said to jesus this is wrong you should have prevented the woman the perfume was very precious it could have been sold it could have fed a few poor people in the town 
Now with whom are you going to agree? With Judas or Jesus? If you are honest, you will agree with Judas. If you are honest with yourself, you will agree with Jesus. He seems to be the beginning of a new kind of isms. He seems to be very logically right. If you agree with Judas, you will find he is logical and right. He was the most intellectual disciple of Jesus, the only educated one, and his logic is flawless. And his logic is flawless. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said something absurd. He said, "You can." Feed the poor when I am gone. The poor will always be there. You need not worry. But while I am here, rejoice. Do you agree with Jesus? If you agree, you can be joyous. If you do not, you are going to remain miserable. Watch your head. Certainly, it will find Judas to be right, and Jesus seems to be utterly absent. What is he saying? The poor will always be there, but right now you are with the bridegroom. Enjoy, celebrate. This is celebration. Now, if people were against Jesus, it seems to be absolutely fitting with your so-called intellect. Jesus says, "I cannot prevent the woman because she is in such joy." I cannot destroy her joy. Look at her tears. Look at her being. She is in such a festive mood. This is just symbolic. This pouring of the precious perfume on my feet is just symbolic. She is utterly happy. She is celebrating, and I cannot stop anyone from celebrating. Celebration is the very essence. Then, if you agree with, will, then if you agree with Jesus, you can be joyous. It is always your choice to agree with Judas or Jesus. I celebrate every moment. Celebration is my nature, and that is what I teach you. I teach how to celebrate with 